Broadway in the Hood is an organization that takes kids who are less fortunate or come from a bad background. We help them to learn how to live through the arts. Broadway in the Hood is a uh, home for some people. We teach them how to be respectable people and that their backgrounds don't have to govern who they are. It's not even all about theater. It's about really finding yourself. Broadway in the Hood is love. It's the love of the arts. It's the love of each other. It's the love of the unknown. Hood stands for helping others open doors, helping others achieve what they need to achieve and, and taking their lives to the next level. Unfortunately, like a lot of our you know, youth that we do have, we have a lot of adults and, and teenagers that uh, have lived on the streets. They've gone through hell. You know, prostitutes, former drug dealers, kids that don't see a value in their lives. We still, right now, deal with some kids that go through issues um, of wanting to be loved. The theater was not only a family, but it was a safe haven for me. Because my mother was young and struggling, and because we did not have hot water at times, and because there were things going on at home that I wasn't necessarily proud of, it became more than a family. And I really believe that's why Broadway in the Hood is what it is, and where it is, and how it is. Welcome everybody to the first production meeting for Dream Girls Las Vegas. Just a quick rundown. We'll have our first official Dream Girls meeting with the full entire cast and crew on January 4th. The biggest challenges that we face with this production thus far um, is the challenge that we have with every production and that's financing. The show opens March the 4th. That's two months from the date of our first meeting. Our organization is totally funded by myself and Tori. We get out there and, you know, we try to make it happen. Moving on to budget. The budget is minus $2,000. <laughs> <laughs> You are so that. fundraising ideas. We yeah. have not acquired any grants or loans. By it being nonprofit, it, it's kind of difficult sometimes. You try to get people to understand that it's much more than just the money. How do we produce a show with no funding? taught me how to sing and project more so like I don't sound like hi 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 I have to project. Tessie Thomas will be starring on Broadway in The Lion King as young Nala. Come on up. She will be moving to New York City next week and she will start her journey as a Broadway actress. It's just giving me confidence in myself, and like being ready and not scared, like never backing down. KCP Power in your soul school station 17. Yeah. Good morning, good morning to you, Las Vegas. Happy Wednesday. Yes. Good morning. You are super excited yes. this morning, aren't you? Yes. Well, you have a reason to be excited, don't you? Yes. I am will be playing Young Nala on Broadway in New York. Yes! Yeah. Uh, in the Lion King, right? Yes. So ladies and gentlemen, Tessie! Yes, indeed. Let's take a look at traffic and find out what's going on in the streets of Las Vegas, Violet. Straight from the hood, yeah. man. So there you go. Young folks, this goes to show you, man. Right. Follow your dreams. Yeah. Follow your dreams.
Dreamgirls has such deep history and such deep roots in the African American community. Uh, it's, a, it's an amazing show. Uh, it's inspiring. Somebody's going to pick me. Something. Something's going to occur. I just want to be a part of it. We just wanted to do a Broadway play, and now it's my opportunity to do it. The, the fact that it teaches all of us that no matter what we dream, we're going to have to go through something. There's always something that you're going to have to go through. It's how you come out of it. You guys going to go in, uh, I'm going to say either left or right, uh, and somebody will guide you to where you're going to be sitting. Okay, so thank you all for coming out. Uh, we sincerely appreciate it. Uh, Broadway in the Hood is really about discipline and organization. We have eight weeks, that's it, to rehearse 38 songs, to learn 10 major dance numbers, and to really, really make this production happen. Let's start with the gentleman in the back. Question for you, have you ever performed before? No, sir, this will be my first time. That a star will guide you my way. Don't necessarily see you for Jimmy, but I may see you for another role. Sometimes I want to call you, but I know you won't be there. Oh. OK, thank you. Um, also, just a quick note, if you're singing your own song, get to the point. Go to the really meaty part of the song. That way, you can just knock me dead right at the beginning. See, Emma! I'm going to sing Great Is Your Mercy by Diamond McClick. OK. Your tender mercies I see day after day. OK, oh. stop. Uh, I, want you to, no, I want you to read this. Take this, read this, and then uh, come back. So gra grab your stuff. <laughs> oh my God, I'm shaking, Did Jesus. My name is Sierra Love, and I auditioned today for Dina and Laurel. I think I did okay, especially because I have a lower register. Um, Mr. Tori seemed like he was really impressed, so I'm in the callback room now, just going over the lines. Okay, thank you. You dance as well? Yes, sir. What kind of dance? There won't be a thought that's close to us. How old are you? 24. 24, okay, good. Uh, I want you to read for Effie. Do you know uh, I am changing? Here we go. Energy, go. Mr. Erling, you were great. That was terrible. <laughs> Energy. Okay. Ready? Energy, go. Mr. Erling, you were great. Thank you. Thank you. What you clapping for? He won't good. Name's John Joseph, originally from West Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, 32, the song I'll be singing is Stevie Wonder's Knocks me off my feet. And I don't want to bore you with my trouble. OK, what's your schedule like? Um, give me one second, please, everybody. Hey, baby, I'm good. How you doing? How's it going? Good, crazy. Hey, baby, how you doing? Good, good, good. good. My name is Kelly Price. I am a singer, uh, songwriter, producer. Who are you? The one and only Kelly Price has come to show her amazing support for Broadway in the Hood. Yes. I've written for a lot of people. R. Kelly, so Aretha Franklin, okay? uh, the Isley Brothers, yeah. Miss Bonnie Raitt. I have her new single, um, Wine on the Judd. I've written for a lot of people myself. Uh, there's a young lady that's getting ready to audition, and she is truly amazing. And I thank God for her. Miss Kelly Price! Tori Russell, he told me about this program here in Vegas. He said, we don't have a lot, but we would love to have you come be with us. And absolutely, absolutely. You're going to love me. We love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I actually am performing tonight in Vegas um, with R. Kelly. <laughs> and uh, I knew about the auditions today. I actually just want to sit and watch some of the auditions. Most definitely. I thought it was really important that everyone that was in there to see me go through the process as well. Thank Love you. you guys and break a leg and good luck. So now we're with our empty audition. Hello. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Danielle. Yes, sir. 
How are you? I am wonderful. Do you see who's sitting behind you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And life is like a song. Okay. Next microphone, take a step to the side. I've been a supporter of this organization for the last couple of years, and uh, I love what they do here in the community. I love what they're doing with kids. I love the opportunities that they're giving to people and helping people find in them what they don't realize is there themselves. Next, Effie. The sign, hold me, woo -woo, okay. Please. We posted online on Facebook about the Dream Girls auditions. So Ms. Price saw it and says, I'm gonna be in town. I wanna to come to the audition and I'm going, wow, that's, that's amazing that she wants to come to our audition. And to have her here on the west side where people say is the bad side, right down the street from here there was a shooting just the other day. Um, you know, there's a lot of gangs and drugs and, and different things, but in the heart, of this community are people who love and who care. I put your picture on my mirror, I start to bless when somebody says your name. What's happening to me? In the dark, can you tell me what it is me? Okay. Um, you're, you're nervous, I can tell. Uh, Miss Price, say something to her for me, please. Nervousness is normal. Um, when we want to be performers, we have to find a way to overcome it. It's great for growth to get there, to get in front of people, and to learn how to conduct yourselves in an audition. It's, it's all, even now, when there are television things or movie things that come up, I have to do this. So this never goes away. You don't get a pass because you've had a level of success. You still have to do and this. As I think of all the things, what you're doing, and in my head I'll paint a picture. I want to say this to you and everyone else that is young like you in your age category, the best singers are the ones who pull from their experience. You may not have as many experiences as the older person who would come to read for something, but take it from what you know. Because for this, you gotta be able to pull from some pain. It's a really, really incredible, incredible program. Uh, Tori Russell is doing a great work here in the community. He always, always, always has great talent. And the good thing is that even for the people who may not get cast in the major roles, I really hope that they understand that he means when he says, you know, keep in touch, come back, be willing to be a part of the ensemble and, and go the extra mile because the next lead role or major role may be for you. But this is the way you get there. And you can sing. You're too young for Effie. Next. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you. So you can step over there next. Something told me it was over. Oh, uh, we want to see you move real quick. Um, Alright, go back there and we'll see you in a minute. Thank you. Next. <laughs> For all the Effies line up. I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need all eight of you all to be here tomorrow morning for dance, okay? No jewelry, no makeup, no glasses, none of that stuff. Hair tied back. Thank you ladies so much, and I'm excited. Are you all excited? All right, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Get your stuff and get out. <laughs> so how do y'all feel? What do y'all think? I love that girl. I think, I think we got some, some, some good talent. There's, there's several women that I like for Effie, so. All right, y'all. Bye, I love y'all. We gotta get out. They're putting us out. Unfortunately, you know, we don't have our own building. We're working on that. We're, but um, we're, we're blessed to be able to have the library that does so much the Clark County Library District. It really allows us to do this for the community. This was the first show that we did in the theater. This show was the first show that we were blessed to do here. This was the start of Broadway in the Hood, a source of joy theatricals. and. Um, Feels really great to be back because this is where it all started for us as African Americans. There's been many other writers and producers who started right here at the West Las Vegas Library Theater. And the history behind not just that, but the area, you know, right down the street was the Moulin Rouge. And now, helping to revitalize and helping to bring back the arts and entertainment is an honor. The weather is sad, but as ever, your voice is so shining, God. Only as I try with all your vibes to keep my mind Just your voice in the rain
Blue Water Ridge Hotel is right in here. I'm the only person that opened up and kept it open longer than six months. I'm on this post right here. I'm everywhere over here. When I came here in 1942, there was less than 15,000 people and there wasn't 1,000 black people. Black people had to get the scraps and anything else they could find. And uh, that's why they lived in shacks. Why you blue, Sierra an angel? Is it my mind or is it yours? All you say. It's just as of gold. No, 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 no. We used to have the Jackson Hotel right here. And there was hotels all up and down here. You know, we had a lot of people come from out of town. And we couldn't gamble across town, so that's what they came over here. They had about eight or nine clubs over here. You know, old saying used to be, they didn't want us downtown and we didn't want to go. All the white people came over here because we didn't want to listen to that hillbilly music. And they had all the jazz and stuff going on over here, so we had most of the business. But then when they integrated, it killed the west side. And people go other places, well, naturally you're going where you get more for your money and where it's really open. So black people who had invested their money in places like this couldn't make no money anymore. So it really went down, down, down as far as the beautification and stuff. I think it's going to change. You got to have somebody with some imagination to get something going. This is the library, and down there's the art center. Something that black people fought for was to get an art place over here, and I didn't think it was going to work myself. Then when it opened up, it filled up right away, and the library is one of the top libraries in town. I think it's very important because then. They never had nothing before over in this area. Hi, my name is Avery Walker. I'm the choreographer for Dream Girls. Um, I'm just going to teach an audition class. Hopefully, I get what I want and people are enthusiastic about working because. It's a lot of work. By the end of the day, uh, we will have the cast of Dream Girls, the musical. Only the strong will survive with me. Can I? Can is, is that enough? Because I've seen what I need to see. Okay. Across the stage. Okay, number one, step down. Congratulations, come to the house, you're in the show. Number six, congratulations, welcome to the show. Number seven, congratulations, welcome to the show. Number eight, thank you so much for auditioning. Number nine, you got a fire inside of you. You dance, congratulations, you're good. I'm sorry. All right, let's get the ensemble up. Okay. Yeah. What you doing late? I, I didn't do it. Uh-uh. I had uh -uh. an excuse. I was so excited uh -huh. that I didn't even hear the time. Pin, okay, I'm here's sorry. the deal. Okay. You're running late. Yes. Pin your number on okay. and go in there ASAP. Wow. One thing we don't do is allow you to come in late. We are always on time. The expectation at Broadway in the Hood is 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 well beyond what most normal people are used to. The first reason is because the world says that African Americans are always late. And I refuse to be a stereotype. That's number one. And number two is, if we don't take the time, our own time, and do what we need to do and make things happen in decency and order, then we might as well not be involved. As we call your number out, you'll step forward. 135. You could dance, but. You could dance, but you got a lot of work to do. 143, you're amazing. We really, really like you. Congratulations, all of you. You all are in the cast of Dream Girls Las Vegas.
We're going to start back with the callbacks for those people <laughs> who have went to read, and then we'll move forward from there. Please make sure you have as much energy as you can. Hello, how are you? You've been here for a while. Thank you for coming by. Hello, my name is Ebony. Um, I'll be auditioning for the part of Dana. Sit yourself down in town and take a ride. I'm on your movie rock steady. Okay, stop for me. Let's have you two, you two as the high. <clears throat> Step into the bad side. Come down, come down, close it up. One more time. Ready? Yeah. Step into the bad side. Woo, woo, woo. Okay, great. Y'all can move out of the way. Um, what's your name, sir? Marquis. Marquis. Mr. Faulkner, I'd like to offer you the role of CC, and I'd like to offer you the role as understudy for CC. <laughs> Curtis Taylor Jr. The role of Curtis Taylor Jr. will be played by John. Step forward. The part of James Thunder Early will be played by Andrew Mays. Michelle will be played by 143. Laurel, number 234. Dina Jones will be played by none other than number 135. The role of Effie White will be played by both of these young ladies. Congratulations. You all are both double cast in the role of Effie White in Dream Girls Las Vegas. I can't stop smiling. We'll be smiling for the next two months. So. We both got the role of a lifetime. Yes. Yes. I came in, I was like, just give me the opportunity to be a part of something great. And I got that. So that's what happened today. I got the opportunity to be a part of something great. Today we have the very first photo shoot um, where we are doing all the headshots for the, for the cast members. I've lived in Las Vegas for probably, this will be my ninth or tenth year. I moved here when I was 10 years old. I came from Los Angeles, Tri-City area, you know, Long Beach, Compton, Linwood. She is going through her first stage of makeup for her headshot today. And then we're gonna judge her up so she becomes a dream girl for that headshot. My friend, she called me and she was like, you know, I want you to try out for dream girls. I looked at the phone, I said, no, I'm not, I don't think, you know, cause I sing background. I'm so used to being in the back. I've never really liked being in the front. I have been singing <laughs> since birth, of course. I wrote my first song, I believe, second grade. I think I still have it. It was called Get It Together. Ooh, you gonna make me sing it? <laughs> you and I both know we need to get it together. <laughs> Cause you are looking so fly, I can't deny. And that was it. We got to collect from the cash so we can get to uh, California so we can watch uh, Dream Girls Live, the actual show that's on tour. So everybody's putting their money together, you know? I always knew music was always something that I loved, loved to do. I always wrote a, like little silly nursery rhyme songs or something just to help because you know growing up it was it wasn't as easy as some people expect it to be. Father was never he was actually murdered two weeks before I was born. I guess got into an argument with one of his friends and his friends went haywire and shot him in the neck and he just died on the spot. He was also into music. Mom wasn't there, mom on drugs, on crack, and it really hurt me. So music kind of always helped me stay sane. <laughs> From this point forward, the only people who need to talk are the people getting worked on. I mean, I used to get talked about all the time because I was the different one. 
I didn't care. I always stood out. I didn't care though. But to them, it was like, ah, I don't look at her. You know? Um, I think I took that and I, probably what makes me a little aggressive now. And uh, why I keep a wall up? Well, oh my God, probably start breaking down. Dang, dang. Um, when I was born, I don't know the doctor term. It's called stiff neck. Um, basically, I couldn't turn my head at all when I was born. And it looks like, like I just have a short neck or none at all. So I used to get talked about that a lot. And in the beginning, I didn't understand because to me, I'm just like, you know, this normal kid. It was like, why would you make fun of me like that? So that's another thing that I block out. Binder clips, that's how we do it in Broadway in the hood. Growing up and going through high school, um, I always asked for theater, but they would never give me theater, ever. They never gave me theater. They thought, I, I mean, because growing up, I mean, I wasn't bad, but I was, I got into some trouble, so um, they didn't really think I would take it serious, I think. Jimmy getting sold. When I was like three or four, I was taken away from my biological mother, and I was put into a foster home. In that foster home, uh, I, I dealt with uh, physical and emotional abuse, um, and it started from day one. The, the, the deeper part of the reason why I started singing was just um, uh, music was a, a comfort zone for me. Can't say I feel pretty. I don't know what's going on up there. <laughs> Some people suck their thumbs. I hummed or sung a song. That was my, my thing. Pop your little bit. Other girls have feathers. But. Uh, Woo! Don't get the blue jacks this quick. Marty, Jimmy, and um, Curtis, and Cece. Uh, yeah, I guess y'all are too tall. We're going to go through the top of the show, and it's going to sound a mess, but we're going to do it without music, and we're going to go through every single scene. Um, we've lost seven people so far already. Some of them did not understand the rigorous schedule. Some of them did not understand what it would really, really take. Keep going. Uh, there is no don't music. Don't touch me, Marty. Stop. Go back. There is no music. You will have to sing everything on it. Here we go. Tori Russell is the muscle in this whole thing. Like, you have to have your A game on with Tori at all times, no matter what. He has to go through pain and tears to get what he needs to be on stage. That's what he's going to do. Not because he's a mean person, but because he knows that we're capable of it. Take it back to your entrance. Your, your entrance, Laurel. More energy. You're the youngest one out of all of them. You gotta bring it. It's broken me down sometimes, but he literally brings out the best. He's very supportive. He has various, a lot of methods to his madness, because he is mad. But Mr. Tory is great. Why are you looking at the floor? Stop. What? You need to perform this. Go. Tory also does not sugarcoat anything. Rough and black. Woo! That was fake. <laughs> Can we do it over? Go ahead. I'm getting ready to leave. I'm d I can't believe you guys don't know this. I'm done. It's not fair to your other cast members when you all don't know your lines. They No, you didn't. You did not say the line just then. It's not fair to every single one of these people who have to learn just as many lines as you all do and going through just as much as you all are not to come in here prepared. gonna be doing it without music. So I didn't rehearse like that. I just rehearsed with the music. So it's like my, my mind is used to hearing certain cues. Thank you. It's just hard, that's all. I'll get through it though. You all probably got 2% of what this journey is going to be like. This is one-tenth of the show. 
You all still have choreography to learn. You all have the right notes to learn. <laughs> we can't do any of that. If we can't move past a scene and a half, six, seven, eight, nine, and four hours, we can't do this show. We can't do it. So just be prepared to leave your feelings outside of the door. It's nothing personal. You wouldn't be up here if I did not want you to play the part. Okay, I'm gonna give you a hug. Ooh, right. Okay, my name is Lucretia Campbell. I am from uh, Rock Hill, South Carolina now, and um, here working with Tori and Broadway in the Hood. So I'm gonna work with the female leads today. Hey, baby! Hey, good to, good see, you to see you again. Yes. This has been, oh my God, about 20 years since I've done Dream Girls. So I am so super califragilistic, just excited, you know, to go back into that Effie character again. Go tell me about uh, how you feel about your character. I love Effie. She's awesome. <laughs> and nobody understands her. Nobody. 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 Do you know why? Well, she doesn't really open herself up like that. She's always taking care of everybody. And I think everybody gets used to that, so when it switches around to her feeling the need to be taken care of, everybody just sees it as she's flipping out because they're not used to that. It's a, it's a very, very strenuous role, and so vocally and uh, theatrically. Well, and what, what do you think about it? I just think that um, she's sheltered. A little spoiled, but not like material spoiled. More, more attention spoiled. Effie had emotional issues that are real. She had to deal with her weight. She had to deal with whether the man liked her for her voice or for her. Curtis is the first man that Effie's ever slept with. So you have to understand, and look, I'm trying to create something here between Dina and Effie. Child sleeping with the same man and don't know it. But what happens is, you get pregnant by him and gives him something that she can't. She can give him a sound and a look, but you give him life. What about your destiny? What if you put something before your destiny? I let this man come in here and take my destiny, so I'm, on, I'm going to the wrong place. That's my destiny. What about that? Because, you know, a man can leave, come and go. But your destiny, you fight for that. I'm going. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. And you are going to love me for it. 
when it's in, when, when the curtain falls, baby, you gonna give me a standing ovation. What right do you have walking out? Don't tell me that you don't know what it's about. I won't stand here and take another attack. You've been carrying on the curtains behind my back. Stop doing this, Effie. Hold on, now let me tell you a secret. Do you think two black women are going to get in each other's face like that? No. And not a fist fall? Yeah. Let's be real. Yes. Let, I mean, you got to make it realistic. Okay. It's just like two men standing in each other's face and just talking. And you, know, you think, no, come no. on, how long do you think that's going to last? So she had so many issues to deal with, which young people deal with today. And so she was the talent of the group. However, she wasn't the look of the group. What's the last word to that? So, happy, 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 happy. I push her hand and I walk around. But you need to make it so. Happy, 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 happy. Ooh, I felt that. Yeah. I was the same girl. I was the fat girl with the beautiful voice. Guys liked me because I had a beautiful voice, but not because I was cute. So I had to look in my own mirror and discover that I was cute. And when I discovered I was cute, it didn't matter what you thought. And so that, but that was something I had to learn. That's a lie, that's a lie. Come on, uh-uh, that's a lie, that's a lie. Now, you said be intimate. Okay, okay, I got you, okay. You mad at Curtis, cause your, Curtis is supposed to be your man. And he's, he's kind of letting you have it in front of everybody. I'm supposed to be your number one and only, and you just let me have it as if I'm like worth two cents. That's a lie, that's a lie. It's just I haven't been feeling that well. Theater is uh, crazy in itself because you have to come up, become that person. And uh, the first thing you have to do is cancel out who you are because it's not about you at all. Um, then you have to embrace that. So act like you all are rehearsing for a gig and she comes late. And you walk in, ladies, ladies! Huh. Let's start over from the top. So you make them angry like, babe, we've been working all afternoon. You come in two hours late talking about let's take it from the top. Um, excuse me, excuse me. Start from the top. Okay. From the top. Hello? Oh, excuse me. Right, right. No, but you don't go into the excuse me. Don't go into the excuse me. Right, don't snap back. Because you want the reaction, you have to get the reaction from them like, did she walk in here late? <laughs> Okay. Wait a minute, now I'm a part of this group too. That's where Effie's anger comes from. One thing about theater is something you have to want to do. You can't do it because your mom thinks you're good at it. You have to know that you're good at it and you can accomplish what needs to be accomplished. The city of Henderson called and said we're having a Black History Month celebration. It's called Gospel Fest. And we'd like to pay you all X amount of dollars to come in and create this show. It's a paid gig, just enough to be able to pay $500 towards the uh, music and all of that great stuff. We're moving on to the next song. I want to be done with this show tomorrow. <laughs> Meaning you all are learning all 20 songs today. today. I love the 70s. <laughs> The great part about the Henderson show is it gives me, them a chance to really understand the energy that I'm looking for, even in Dreamgirls. And this is a lot different music, but it's fun. So this they have fun with. Dreamgirls is a lot more work in a different kind of way. Again, thank you so much for rehearsal. I'll see you all on Sunday. Love you all. Mean it.
be an interesting day today. Um, just getting back from out of town and uh, we're gonna discuss some issues that we're having right now, not only with the production, but with some of the cast members. How y'all doing? Good, 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 good. Well, we wanted to, to meet for a few minutes. Um, the show is not ready. It's far from ready. And the reason why everybody is sitting up here right now is because we've made some decisions. Tonight, there will be two cast members that will be asked to leave. If you all can't respect each other, then there's no need of continuing. We do not take disrespect at all. The blatant disrespect will stop. For those of you rude blank, 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 blanks, who had the audacity to think that you are such a diva, that you could not help these people who bust their butts to get you in a costume, you don't deserve a costume. The ensemble will be dressed in all black. The leads will be the only people in the show who will change costumes. I, I just want to say, I think we've tolerated more than enough. Carolyn, we're going to ask you to leave the production. We thank you. You have such amazing talent. And my prayer is that you will not allow your mouth to stop the successes that God has for you. The same thing holds true for one of our older cast members. Anisha, I'm going to ask you not to be in this production. Two weeks, we have to make it happen. I just want to say, I'm sorry. I've loved coming here. This thing has changed my life. And since I've been here, it's given me so much. It's given me so much to feel like I can do more. It's given me, it makes me feel like I'm, I'm more than what I thought I was. And that's all I got to say. Thank you. That's all I got to say. You got to understand that it's all a defense mechanism. And this is part of breaking down that defense mechanism so that you will be able to see how really beautiful you are. I got a defense mechanism because everybody I let in ever burned me. I, I, I get That's it. That's why. I, I, I completely understand. We will not burn you. You are the epitome of what Broadway in the Hood is about. We don't want you to go. We're gonna see how it works. Your mouth has been holding you back from so many opportunities, but now is your chance. Push all of that aside. You just have to know that you have to humble yourself. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, see you tomorrow. With your thank yous on. I came out here on a wish and a dream. I'm very grateful for Broadway in the Hood because they gave me a joy that I did not have. This is the hardest I've ever worked for something. That's how I know I want it. This is people I want to be around because they make me feel like somebody. Thank you for believing in me. Oh. I am. <laughs> I am. <sighs> We've all been hurt. We've all been through so many things. And, and if, if you don't have anybody to believe in you, it is the worst thing ever. So you have to have people on your side that will be able to feed you the good things. I moved here and I um, went to work for the company that produced Broadway at the Aladdin Hotel and Casino, and I later went on to become the director of operations for our Broadway touring productions. I was able to travel the country and, and see how much people love the arts and love theater. So Broadway in the Hood was inspired by Broadway Across America, Broadway Under the Stars, all of these different Broadway seasons that happened throughout the country, but none that could be accessed by families. That, that, that didn't have the funds, and, and that's why Broadway in the Hood was started. And I wanna go completely through. Uh, second row, Anisha, go back. Uh, 
Carolyn. Thank you. Thank you. I saw you saying something other than that. Hello, Jerry. Marty has said you needed a singer. Stop. Keep all that energy going. This whole scene should be two seconds long. Oh, Jerry told me you need a second. Yeah, child, let me tell you about what happened when I got drunk. Woo, Lord, I'm on one right now. It's all of that energy that comes before, and then we see that dramatic change when you realize, dang, maybe this is my last opportunity to do anything. Um, I need the rest of the audience here, please. It's nine o'clock, one week before your show is due to open. And you're entering on the stage with no facial expressions. There's no excitement and it's, it's pissing me off. And it's disrespectful for the people who fight hard for this shit to do it good. Tory's working too hard. Preston is working too hard. I can't take it no more. It's a joke. You look really, really, really bad. And if you think you look good, you are sadly mistaken. Yeah. Yep. I understand that, well, we feel like they're always arguing at us, or they're always fussing at us. Why? Woe is me. If you get your shit together, we won't have to argue. Top of the song. One, two, three, hit me, pop the pop, ba ba da ba dee ba This is night number two, which is technically kind of our opening night because the first night was our dress rehearsal. Dina, that was awesome. When you don't yell, he really has a chance to make you a dream. G-E-W! This is the official opening of Next show. the actual show, so it's, uh, it's everybody's kind of excited. We're putting on Dream Girls momentarily, man. I am so excited. This cat behind me. <laughs> I love this cast, man. Phenomenal cast. Um, I'm just excited, man. For the first time, I've been in many movies, many plays. I'm nervous. I got butterflies. I'm excited. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Dream Girls. This is what you call a hood technique. <laughs> it makes it soft like tissue. I got like the greatest news of my life this morning, so I'm so excited. I can't wait for Dream Girls. We're going to set it on fire. My doctor called me this morning and told me that I'm negative for cancer. Hey. I would like to commend Tori Russell for having me in this cast because he did not know how much this cast kept my mind together. How much being here on a weekly, daily basis kept me sane. I'm going to do something like that. We'll be starting in one second. And then, well, a few minutes. Hi! Hi! How are you? This is Broadway in the Hood production. This is not any production. It's a Broadway in the hood production. Directed by Toya Russell. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm going to hold down for a few seconds. We've made it finally to the opening. We started, what, two months ago? Now. Right here in the theater. And here we are. It's a beautiful cast of people. I feel like it's the beginning of the end, but I don't want it to be. <laughs> I'm very nervous, but in a good way. She just can't talk because we're preparing. Effie is a very hard role singing wise, so we have to be wise. Showtime. It's truly an honor and a blessing to be here. Um, to everyone that's here, you're here for a reason, because you're special to someone. Uh, be, be it a cast member, be it Broadway in the Hood, and we thank you for your support. How you doing? I'm John Anthony Joseph and I'm Curtis. Drew Young Mays and I'm playing Jimmy Irving. Like seven lad, and I'll be playing the character of Lorraine. I'm Jimmy Irving. 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 I'm Jimm
Hey, baby. Hey. Braces, braces. Slow, slow, slow. We ready. I am so ridiculously scared oh, and nervous. Yeah. I'm excited. None of that is showing on the outside because I've got an awesome poker face. But on the inside, I'm actually having a seizure. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dream Girls Las Vegas. I hope and pray that everyone is encouraged by this show, that people go out and do whatever it is that they want to do after this show. Like, if you want to be a painter, paint. If you want to sing, sing. And when it's your season, walk in it. Don't hide from it like I try to walk, walk in it. I do want to be a star. I do want to do that. I, I want to fulfill that. After that, my goal is to teach. The ultimate goal in my life at this point in my life is to start a family. In the meantime, though, I still love performing. Um, I've also loved writing my whole life, so you know I might even write a show for Broadway in the Hood one day. It goes back to um, if you really want to do it, you just say, I'm going to do it no matter what. I hopefully, you know, I know I'm not going to be, always be perfect. I mean, you're never going to be perfect, but I know I'm not always going to be where I'm supposed to be. This is the first moment that I've had an opportunity to uh, relax my mind, you know. Everybody has done all that they possibly can. Um, I can knock on all the wood I can find. Um, everything is working out perfectly. The sound is wonderful. The lighting cues are wonderful. Everything comes together at the end of the day. 